Okay, welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board Health meeting for November 10th, 2021. It is 5.05 p.m. Um, this is a hybrid meeting, the Zoom participants and, and people here in the audience at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting um, will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the Governor Baker's June 16th, 2021 Act extending certain provisions of COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of the open, uh, extension of the remote participation provisions of its March 20, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy of the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technical problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host a meeting in the main meeting room of, um, at the Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participation detailed below, which is uh, there's a dial-in number for people who are watching at 312-626-6799. There's a toll-free number of 833-548-0276. Uh, the meeting ID is 911-604-1580. You can also go to the town website down on the bottom right under the calendar. You'll see this meeting listed. You can click on that then click on the agenda and then click on the Zoom link and then you can participate by Zoom. Uh, people who are on their phones uh, should mute their phones by um, star six for landlines unless um, asking questions or commenting and all attendees should wait to speak until other participants are finished. So welcome and um, meeting now open. Okay. Over to the chair. Call, call the meeting to order. Thank you. Uh, the first thing on the, our agenda is uh, for the Deerfield Select Board and Board of Health public comment procedures that we're going to be using from now on to provide the select board meeting attendees the opportunity to share information with the board and to ensure the ability to conduct business in an orderly manner. The following procedures will be used at all meetings. The presiding chair or designee shall determine the length of the public participation segment. Tonight uh, that will end at 6 uh, p.m. Speakers will be allowed two minutes to present their material. The presiding chair or designee may permit extension of time, the time limit. Topics of discussion will be limited to those items under the authority of the select board and all remarks will be addressed through the presiding chair or designee of the meeting. Um, the reason I'm wearing a mask this evening is because I've had a cold and just to be on the safe side. So tonight for public comment, we have um, two minutes, right? So I've got a little timer to let people know everybody gets a fair, fair time and um, chair can extend it if needed. So, so uh, the first item on our agenda is the steam mill residents. Okay. Yeah. I ask you to yeah, come please. up to the mic, identify yourself. I'll leave it on the... Yeah, yep, you can right there. Yep, so can, you, can you hear me? Yes, that works. Okay, great. Uh, thank you so much. My name is Andrea Liebson. I live at 41 Steam Mill Road. Can they turn and the camera? Wanna... Sorry. I'm sorry? What's that? Is that oh, there is... to... oh, it's okay. Then. Okay, great. Good? Yep, go ahead. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> thank you. I want to thank the select board uh, the opportunity to talk to you. Um, I wanted to let you know that um, my neighbors and I have spent a bunch of time talking in the last uh, couple of months, and we have learned a lot of things about Steam Mill Road, some of which we'd like to share with you. I prepared a whole little packet. I hope that each of the select board members in Casey mm -hmm. received this. Yep. Um, it includes information that we want to make sure that, that you all would have. The idea that the maintenance on our road would be discontinued is um, very disconcerting to us. There are seven households um, who would be affected, and that includes 15 people, three of whom are essential workers, four of whom are children um, uh, of elementary age, and four of whom are senior citizens. So to not have plowing done would be quite upsetting. 
Um, we have provided you with surveys done by a number of uh, individuals for when the land um, on Steam Mill Road got divided. And so you can see it all. In each case, the surveyor talked about Steam Mill Road, a public way. And the one thing I wanted to, uh, to point out about my, um, my home is that uh, Carl and Mary Crow built our house in 1977. They built it on land that they subdivided off of a whole big family um, collection. They lived in the house from 77 to 84. In 1984, they decided to sell, did a survey because they uh, parceled out land. And um, they sold the house to a woman named Doris Ducre. And in the mortgage deed that more, uh, Doris Ducre has had, she lived there for 18 months, um, it says that this was in land, um, uh, the land in Deerfield located on the easterly side of Steam Mill Road and Extension, comma, a 1951 town way. So we believed um, that our house that was on a street that was a town accepted property. And the, um, I, I provided you with, with a smaller version of this survey, which says, said to be a town way maintained by town. And this um, survey was prepared for, as I said, Carl and Mary Crow. Carl Crow at the time was a planning board member. So I assume that he would be following the rules. Uh, so that um, I wanted to make sure you had that attention brought to you. One of the other interesting things that we learned is that Steam Mill Road has um, a state park on it, which we, um, which I had not understood. Right, part of it is right next to my home, and how are people allowed to access that if they can't get to it from Steam Mill Road? And the uh, plowing is supposed to stop before that. So, I have uh, my other neighbors to have um, have things they'd like to say. If you have any questions for me, I'd be happy to answer them. But I, otherwise, I could take my. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for the comments and, and putting together that information. I just want to let everyone know that Andrea's submission is in the packet, which is online. Okay, good. Uh, anybody else? Mr. Jamil? It's all going a little yes, bit here. I, I kind of said my piece a couple few weeks ago when we first uh, first met. Um, so first of all, we kind of had the feeling that you folks were going to kind of rethink this a little uh, over the intervening period, and we're, I was wondering what you would, if you would come up with anything from uh, from the town's perspective at, at this point. Did you state your name? I'm sorry, just for the record. Mark Russo. Long-time resident of here at Steam Mill Road. Thank, Thank you. you. You want Lisa to address? Yeah, yeah. Lisa, do you want to address this? Um, sure. I think that um, it's my understanding the board is allowing public comment right this moment, and then uh, the board's going to have a discussion about this after they hear public comment. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'm glad we have counsel here tonight. Uh, as I said before, I'm I am not a lawyer. Uh, the information we have given you has indicated 50 years of town precedent treating this as a town maintained way. Uh, town authorities have issued building permits. There's been surveys and, and uh, division of land plans approved and done by the same surveying firm that was referenced in your original decision, Gordon Ainsworth and son and uh, Gordon E. Ainsworth uh, and their successors. Uh, they, these surveys were done post-1952 by the same surveying firm indicating said steam mill road is said to be a town maintained uh, way. So, and there's a lot of, a lot of precedent, uh, eight or nine building permits have been issued. Uh, some of these plans have been signed off of by the planning board, including the one that, that Andrea uh, alluded to. So I'm just thinking that, uh, you know, it, it, it's certainly a situation where to say after 50 years of precedent 
that the town is backing away from uh, this road, at least up to number 60, uh, being a town public way. I think that's doing a significant amount of harm to the people that have invested uh, serious money in, in building their houses down there. And I, and I think uh, for these people to have to get together and form an association to manage a private road with liability issues and budgetary issues, I just think that's an unfair thing to, uh, to apply. But I basically said that before, but I just wanted to yeah, find out where you folks were at. And we certainly hope you don't have a decision tonight that you're, that you're giving it more thought along those lines and, and hopefully we'll, we'll come to a decision which we think is, is fair to all of us. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Anybody else? Comment? Anyone else want to speak? No. Okay. No one online. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the comments. Um, you know the the select board has not made a decision at this point in time. Uh, we are taking on an advisement with our council, Lisa Mead. Uh, and trying to figure out the best way to handle this. Um, and I appreciate the situation that you folks are in, but there's also certain things that we have to follow as a town. And I don't know if you want to expand on that at all, Lisa? Sure. Um, and for the record, because um, I didn't introduce myself earlier, I apologize for that, Mr. Chair. Uh, Lisa Mead, uh, Mead Tellerman Costa Town Council for the town. Uh, and through the chair to the board, uh, and the members that are there. So I do wanna just address briefly a couple of the comments that were made and then hopefully talk about a path forward uh, for everyone. So I can certainly appreciate the comments related to the various deeds or plans that indicate that um, you know all of Steam Mill Road um, and Steam Mill Road extension might be a public way, um, but those are not definitive under the law. Um, and certainly the uh, planning board has a right to lay out a &R plans off of a private way that can be traveled. So the fact that the planning board approved a plan um, with Steam Mill Road laid out on it, um, or at least exhibited on it, uh, doesn't necessarily mean the road is a public way. Because in fact, in Massachusetts, a road can become a public way only by a limited number of circumstances. Um, if it existed and then continued to be used prior to 1846, it's called a way by dedication. After that, it has to be actually laid out and accepted by the town, either generally um, as a layout and taking or as pursuant to a subdivision that was approved by the planning board and then actually accepted, uh, laid out, laid out and then accepted by town meeting. And the overall reason for that is, is there's actually a statute that says the town is not allowed to spend money on cleaning up or maintaining private roads absent not only a town meeting vote, but a, a town wide vote. Uh, to do that, that's chapter 40, section uh, 6D so um, and 6C. So um, the town can't just do certain things now that it's been brought to its attention. However, that doesn't mean that the town is without any power to do anything. So I think the record um, from all of my research over the last couple of years, and then most recently I was given a document, uh, uh, interestingly, from a study that done by FERCOG back in 1999, uh, which actually verifies what we've been saying for the last several years, uh, that a steam mill road was essentially laid out as a, a public road at the end of 1951 um, for you know, a certain amount of, I think it's about just about 1400, square, 1400 feet as a public way. Uh, and then there was, I think what they call the extension on it, which also is paved, uh, which everybody just presumed to be a public way for all of the reasons that everybody says, because you know, when you buy a house or you look at a plan, you don't necessarily go to the town to determine whether or not it was actually accepted as a public way. It's not something we as buyers typically would do. But in fact, that end of it hasn't been accepted as a public way. And so now that it was brought to the town's attention that in fact it was, the town needs to take action in order to do it. So if you look at Steam Mill Road as uh, essentially, I think, four segments, I guess I would describe it as, and I'm you know, I'm not there and I haven't walked it specifically, but 
um, you could correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Chair. You, you have the, the first section, the 1400, square, 1400 feet or so linear feet, which has been accepted as a public way. And then you have an additional section that's paved that there are houses that come off of some of the residents spoke tonight. That's not been accepted. Then you kind of have a, a gravel area uh, that's been maintained by somebody else. And then you have kind of a, an old cart path through the woods, um, if that's a proper description of it. So the town could decide to accept uh, any part of the rest of the way. Um, you typically wouldn't accept a way that hasn't met or isn't close to meeting certain kinds of construction standards. Today, we use the subdivision control regulations to determine what kind of construction standards those are, or a recommendation by your Department of Public Works to says, yeah, this is in pretty good shape. It doesn't hurt for us to continue to maintain it at this point in time and accept that section of it. I will tell you that because it's not a part of a subdivision, in order to do that acceptance, uh, you would need to do titles, uh, title searches on the properties that live on both sides of it, just to affirm who actually owns the road to the middle. The town would do a taking of the road itself. So it became a part of the town land um, and it would be laid out and accepted at town meeting. So that's the process that you would follow um, in determining whether or not you wanted to accept a road as a public way. And it's a pretty practical part of it. And so I'm happy to answer any questions because um, I kind of rattled on there for a little bit. So I'll, uh, this is Trevor, I'll just, um clarify a little bit. I think I think if you walk the road uh, from County Road uh, to the paved section, it's the 1,400 feet or so. Is there anything beyond the paved? Yeah, basically right. right. what there is is from County, from, from, what I've, from what I've seen here and what's been uh, provided, is 1,450 feet from the intersection of County Road and Pleasant Ave right. is the um, it was adopted in 1952. Right, and then from then on, it, it becomes gravel, I believe. Correct. Yeah, actually, a little part, bit of pain. Part of it is actually gravel. You actually go into the gravel section, first house on the right. I'm sorry, I can't remember the name. 34. 34. Um, first house on the right, you, you stop shy, like, 12 feet of their southern border of their property. Is that where the 1400, that's where the 1400 and that's about where the gravel is, right? Correct. So from then on, it's 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 kind of dirt road Correct. out to 60, Correct. and then kind of uh, Gwanter kind of picked up from there to, to his property. Correct. So um, so that's kind of where where we're at on that. And I think I think just speaking for myself, um, I we've been trying to you know walk that ground of okay, we've been presented this information, the the. The town requires us and law requires us to take certain steps now, um, and that's why we discontinued the road because that was um, that was what we had for for guidance, and that that's really the law. So we had to do that, and then moving from there, we had to you know we have to move on to figure out what, where we go from here. And I think the board wants to find a, a, a you know a solution and a and a and a middle ground. But I think again we'll need help from council and. The town will have to decide do we you know want to spend that money to go ahead and do that we also have to look at drainage along that road i think there, in that section there's a there's a ravine area that would need to be improved as well um you know it's not horrible shape but it's not it's not great either so there's you know runoff from the upper um eastern part of the hill comes down and then there's you know pretty steep, steep ravine on the other side there's a pipe going through it now. Is it adequate size? You know that kind of thing, or dealing with that kind of runoff. And that seemed like pretty much the only spot that it looked to me that there was major kind of work that needed to be done. There may be some gullies and stuff on either side of that. But I think the intent is not to not to if if the town were to move forward in that direction, we wouldn't want to make the road a paved, you know, curved kind of. We want to keep that rural kind of feel to that. So. Um, because it is, it's a beautiful, I mean, it's a beautiful road. I mean, if you walk out there in the beautiful fall weather, it's just a gorgeous, uh, you know, walk and ride up and down the road to, to, to evaluate the gorgeous spot. You wouldn't want to see it paved and curved and all that stuff, but it would need some improvement around that gully area for sure. Because, you know, with climate change, the way we have right now, we're getting torrential downpours and we've dealt with that all summer long on five and 10, we get that washout from 
from the hillside down through all the brooks out, out to that. We, we had to spend considerable town money to clean that out this year. Um, and we're hoping, you know, not to have to do that constantly, but. Mr. Mr. So. Chair, if I, I, I just want to add one thing into this discussion, just so you know, um, uh, that under chapter 40, 84, section one, if there is, if you do accept it as a public way, then you do have an obligation to maintain the public way so that it may be reasonably safe and convenient for travelers in all seasons, right? So where you're talking about accepting a way that may not be paved, which is fine, that's certainly the discretion that the board has, that then gives you obligations to maintain that so it's safe for travelers in all seasons. So your determination about keeping it gravel or not gravel, pavement or not pavement, goes to your ongoing maintenance. That's right. Thank you. We have several roads in town that are gravel that are accepted yep. public way. That's fine. And, and part of that is actually because in front of their house, it, that's all gravel. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so part of the layout is part of that is gravel. It's yeah. not all paved. Right. 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 So, um, <laughs> my good perspective. Oh, mm -hmm. please. Get um, a quick little recap. Yes, I'm sorry. If Carolyn's had her hand up. Good. Carolyn? Uh, I just want to say, um, you know, personally, and I think, you know, discussions with, um, you know, the, uh, you know, in general, I think people do feel that the town road was to 60. Um, you know, once the ZBA had granted Guanter's uh, Brett, and uh and his wife uh, the variance so that they could you know take over that was the end of our responsibility so um i i just feel personally and i think the rest of the board i can speak for the rest of the board the consensus is that we do feel an obligation we just have to figure out a way to resolve this where it's not precedent setting um and that it will stand up in land court and, um, you know, the Lisa feels it's, it, you know, the end of our obligation is where Brett's private way um, starts at 60. And um, so we, want, we don't want to leave anyone hanging while we're trying to resolve this, um, but uh, we need to work on it. And it's going to take a while. So I would, I would need to, um, to the member, through you, Mr. Chair, um, I would need to run titles on uh, the the end of the public way to the end that you want to accept, right? Determine um, which, you know, it, it doesn't sound like that would be a, a huge lift, but to determine, you know, the rights in the way, then we'd prepare, um, you know, with the help of the DPW director, the, um, the plan that shows the extension, because you have to have a surveyed plan. Um, and then essentially the assuming we can do that, we'd prepare the taking document. It would come to a layout hearing for the board, um, which has to be right before town meeting. And then it would be placed on the town meeting warrant uh, to do the, um, the acceptance and taking at the same time. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. Kevin? Um, just kind of recap a little bit, you know, um, I'll be honest with you, I thought 60 was the end, because that's what I was always told. Um, that's what we did. With that being mm -hmm. said, nothing has been brought to light until this report was sent to the us, the town, because they were looking for information farther past the launchers, because they were asking the southern end of um, Steam Mill Road was part of the questions that they were asking about, which is past the launchers. Um, I, again, my assume where we're supposed to go to 60. Once all this information has been brought to us, then that in turn goes to the lawyer, and now we're at the impasse of where the law is. Now, part of where, where I'm a little confused is it's going to kind of depend on which one of these documents you're going to look at to say how wide the road is. If you look at the one from 19, excuse me, from 17, 21 that you gave me. Yeah, from, from, from 17, whatever, 
on two rods. It was, right? it was four rods. Oh, four rods. That's 66 feet wide. Right. That one says two rods. Yeah. There's another one in here that says three rods. Yeah. I need yeah. to know if we're going 66 feet or if we're going now. That is why going on the assumption where they talk about the 66 feet, that's where I show concern about the culvert. Because that culvert, as everyone knows, is driven through it. It's basically yeah. from edge to edge, and which is much less than we need. Obviously, I believe it would be a fairly easy fix. You should be able to add pipe on both sides, put some gravel on either side, widen out a little bit. But if you go further than that, sorry, um, if you go further than that, then you need to start taking the front of people's properties as, as part of the roadway. And Evan? I am not, I'm not exactly sure which direction you want to go. I'm sorry. No, Lisa just wanted to, council wanted to say something about your comment. Yeah. So on the, on the part of the road that's not yet accepted, that's why we, that's why the town needs to hire a surveyor and you're going to determine then what the public layout's going to be. That, that, that will be, de you will determine that. We're not, we're not, the, the surveyor will certainly look at the historical documents. But the town, if it's going to it's going to lay out and accept a road, it's going to lay out and accept a road that it wants to lay out and accept. So right. um, and I don't mean that I certainly don't mean that in exclusion of the abutters. I think that everybody's trying to work together here. So my my recommendation is that you get a surveyor to understand the existing conditions and the uh, the the conflicts within the title. And then the town meets with whoever you need, you know, you all meet and decide this is what the road is going to be. It's going to be 22 feet wide. It's going to be 50 feet wide. It's going to be however wide it's going to be. And that's the road that's going to be laid out and accepted. So you don't need to resolve what it is because what's going to happen, you're going to have a survey of existing conditions. You're going to decide what road you're going to lay out and accept. Okay. That's helpful. Sorry. Okay. So now is that incumbent on the town? Well, is it a, a town? Well, that's that's the good, that's the question. That's a million dollar question here. Yeah. So typically, if somebody is, is in a subdivision, right, the developer pays to have do all of this work. If the town is laying out a road on its own, the town would. I mean, that's a decision you're going to have to make. You know what the bill is. <laughs> well, right. So I don't know. You, I, I think that you know, but I think Trevor, you might want to, uh, you know, you're going to get you get some quotes from some engineers and find out what it's going to cost to create a plan in existing conditions. And you know, I can look and see how many properties we're talking about, and I can give you an estimate on the titles. That's helpful. Thank you. Okay. Lisa, question. Yeah. Lisa. Uh, Kevin Scarborough, um, I have a question. Is is it possible because everything is up in the air and nothing, is, as far as I know, and correct me if I'm wrong, is, is confirmed one way or the other, and because of the season that we're at, can we continue to go to 60 as far as just plowing and sanding legally? And then the next question is, is because I do use contractors up there, if it is not eventually found to be a town way and there's in its private way which actually belongs to everyone if there's a problem up there with my contractor where does the liability fall at that point between the town and and, and i've got no problem going to safety it's not that big of a deal for us but i need to make sure that we can do all this legally okay. what i'm looking at um so uh i don't believe the town has this um, section, but I will need to look at the bylaws, Kevin. So there's a method by which if, it, if a, the town had a bylaw that said you could, um, you could temporarily uh, repair, make safe a private way temporarily um, on like an as needed basis kind of thing, you're allowed to do that, but you have to have a bylaw that would get you there. So I haven't um, done a review of the bylaws yet to see if you actually have that. I think that um, you know we can we can talk a little bit about it. I, don't, I can't give you a straight answer. I mean, if you don't have the bylaw, the statute says you can't do work on a private way, right? You're not allowed to spend money there. However, I think given the current circumstances and the recent past history, uh, we may be able to have some 
um, we may be able to find some wiggle room. Right. Great. That's that's the goal to, to research then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hi, this is Andrea Liebson again. Um, one of the concerns um, is about whether or not we would be able to get emergency um, vehicles in and out. And so oh, if, right. if the task declined to, um, to plow, that could, be, that could be a real issue for us. Um, and I also just wanted to, to uh, specify again that the town, is, the steam mill road is two rods wide um, from 34 to 60, according to all of these surveys that we that we have done. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Jennifer, can I, um, Linda Chapley, may I say something? Um, I have a quick question. David, we have somebody online, Linda, would like to say something? Um, Lisa, I just wanted to uh, ask about that um, Title Seven, Chapter 40, Section 6N, which says um, cities and towns may by ordinance or by law provide for making temporary repairs on private ways. I'm not sure how an ordinance comes to be or isn't that something that can be just voted on by the council? Hey, uh, just for a point of information, uh, all questions have to be directed to the chair, not to the council. So uh, then- I apologize, we... sorry about that. Okay. This is Linda who? My name is Linda Chapley. I have a Chapley. property on Steam Mill. I don't think it's affected by this, but I did get the letter, so that's why I'm here. Okay. And I did a little bit of research on um, the Massachusetts laws, and I just I wasn't sure how um, council how how an ordinance might make it easier if it's something that can be done more on a local local or quicker level than a bylaw. Through you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. So an, ordin an ordinance is actually the equivalent of a bylaw, except for it's in a city. Um, the bylaw is the town, it would be in a town and the town adopts bylaws through town meeting. A city adopts ordinances through a city council. So that's the only difference between an ordinance and a bylaw. And that is the statute that I was referring to that I have to review the town bylaws. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your comments, Linda. Thank you. Uh, I think, uh, Carolyn, any further comments? Only, only that I, again, I think all of us feel the same way and that um, we just don't wanna leave anyone hanging. So I don't think people need to worry about emergency vehicles not making up there, that kind of thing. That's not gonna happen. It doesn't even happen when we have, you know, people need their driveways plowed and there's a medical event. Um, we call the highway department out. So please don't be stressed about that kind of thing. Okay. Trevor? No, I, I, I think, I feel like, you know, we have we have a, uh, a plan going forward. We still need some research through council mm -hmm. and through our bylaws. And um, I think just take it under advisement and, and, and keep moving on forward. Yeah. We don't need a vote on that, right, Casey? There's nothing, there's not really anything to vote on. We just, we're all agreeing that we're going to resolve this and we're working together. And I, I, I feel like we're all on the same page. Nobody is, um, really feels differently. Any further comments, Lisa? Uh, no, I, I know my marching orders and um, I'll get back to uh, Casey. Okay, thank you. Jennifer? I do know something that the residents were worried, and I think Kevin addressed this already, but I just wanted to sort of reiterate if it snows before there is, you know, a final meeting, what what should they do? So I'm, if, I, if I could, I think we're going to resolve that question, Jennifer. I'm going to do a little research, and I'm going to talk to Casey and Kevin about it. Oh, okay. So that will be done prior to yep. another, okay. Hopefully. Hopefully. Right. <laughs> it's New England. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, just make ease their mind. People, we're not going to leave people hanging. 
I just, I just want to state that we're not committing to anything, uh, you know, certainly not on tape, but we're not going to let people hang. I, I, you know, we are all neighbors. We're all working on this together. Okay. Um, so the board is going to take this under advisement. Uh, going to consult with uh, council. She's going to read the bylaws and hopefully we can come to a resolution quickly. Uh, and, you know, Try not to leave you folks hanging. Um, you know, we all appreciate what you're going through, and you know, we actually feel bad about it right now. But there's not only so much that we can do, and still keep within the law, and not open a Pandora's box within the town. So uh, we've got to be careful on how we handle this and make sure we're doing it the right way. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a good evening, folks. I'll see you later. Thank you, Lisa. Thank, Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. I really appreciate you being here with us. It was very helpful. Oh, always my pleasure. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. And thank you, everyone, for coming to the meeting. All right. We do have some items on it. I can't hear. I don't have my hearing aids. Do, do we need to wait until 6th of November? No. Oh, we, we keep working? There are buildings in child who lived here for the last 150 years. There are. Trevor's So, could I, Mr. Chair, through you, may I? I can't hear anything. I don't have my hearing aids in. I want both of you in the math. So, there are two items unanticipated on your agenda yep. for um, the scheduled jump to the CCI meeting. Okay. And Carolyn, did you want to address those two items? Sure. Um, Bud uh, Driver was um, somehow missed in our cultural uh, resource officer appointment in June. And um, there is a project going in on um, Mill Village Road piping project that he needs to oversee. So we need to appoint Bud um, as our cultural resource officer so he can respond to that project. I thought we did that, Carolyn. No, he was he was moving out of town, so we we bypassed it? Yeah. God, I could have swore we did it. So well he was that. here he was here until just recently. So if we appoint him until we find a replacement and it's, it's okay. We have, we have precedents. I mean, Skip Olmstead has been living out of town for months, I mean, in years. So, um, Bud, Bud could be our cultural resource officer for this project. Have to do it on a temporary basis. Okay. So, um, well, there's only a few months left of the year, right? So, so. Yeah, I'm, motion. I mean, I would make a motion to appoint Bud. He's done a very good job for the town, and he, he overlooks all of the different projects. I, I could have swore we voted him, but I I, I, I did too. Him. I did too, but supposedly there's no record of it. So poor Bud can't sign officially sign off on anything unless he's appointed. So uh, it's holding up the project, and we can't wait till our next meeting to, you know. Okay. It'll probably That's be going. done. Made a motion to appoint Bud Driver to be our cultural resource, resource officer. officer. And I will second um, that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Motion carried 300. Next thing on the uh, unanticipated is Board of Health agent hours transfer from reserve request for agent salary. You want to speak to that? Mr. Chair, through you. Um, we do need to develop a reserve fund transfer to cover the cost of uh, agent services. There's been quite an uptick in some of the services the health agent oversees on behalf of the Board of Health, such as septic systems and, and other types of inspection. Um, due to COVID, certain things, we weren't able to do certain things in a safe manner. So there were cases where we had put a few things off. And so bringing everybody back up to speed has cost a little more time and money than we anticipated. I respectfully request that the board authorize me to work with Brenda Hill, our town accountant, to develop a transfer request amount. But 
and this is something that we were going to bring to you anyway, but it's become something of an issue because it's through another warrant period, we're rapidly depleting that payroll line item. Because we really have two agents working we at the same time right We have two people working, now. yes. And one's facing out, the other facing in, is that the idea? I anticipate seeing some form of a phase-out letter from one of our Board of Health agents. We have several agents that back Back up, uh, that provide right. backup. Yeah. Um, but one thing that I have to say is members of the Board of Health on occasion, particularly Carolyn, have provided volunteer service to do inspections, for instance, for the craft fair at PVMA right. um, over the years. And as the as things change on the health front, a lot of which is happening as a response to COVID, more and more time is necessary to focus on those items and less on the volunteer inspection piece of it. So we're running into an issue where we, we do have to get those inspections done, but having the manpower to do it, our, our process may need to change in the budget season for okay. 2023. So is the idea for you to bring back to us next yes. week a, a dollar amount? Yeah, okay. we're, I would like to be able to bring you back a dollar amount for next week after yep. you develop it. Okay. Um, but in terms of the hours, that's, that's, that's something the board will need to discuss going forward. Yeah. But the transfer is critical to get done as sooner rather than later. Okay. Carolyn, you had a couple things to add to that, correct? Well, it's just um, anticipation of uh, weekend hours for, um, you can do pre-inspection of the food trucks at Treehouse as they come online during the week, but they will be inspected over the weekend. And so we'll have week, you know, weekend hours that, um, you know, before would be split by Dick or myself and neither one of us you know, ever put in for those hours. And we just don't feel that um, we can we can commit to that kind of weekend hours. I mean, I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> you know, it's one thing to do the craft fair or, you know, Yankee Candle event that's like, you know, once a year or, you know, it's a few weekends a year that Dick and I usually split. But I, you know, going forward, we're going to have a lot more health board of health hours for a health agent. Um, it will be paid for. It will be covered. It's not that the town is paying for. We we have to figure out a fee schedule with Treehouse that will cover the expense of the agents. So the money is coming in and will go to the general fund. But this is an an expense that, um, you know, that neither Dick and I feel comfortable taking on. It, it will have to be a paid health agent job. Right. That's good. Yep. It will because okay. it will be every. I mean, we're anticipating every weekend. So, to, truthfully, we're anticipating expanding the, um, you know, board of health agent hours from twenty to thirty, and that will be happening, you know, within a couple months. I would assume, um, you know, it seems like anyway. So. It's, it's a mid, it, right, it's a mid budget change that, um, you know, we could probably cover it for a little while, but, uh, you know, uh, neither one of us, neither Dick or I feel comfortable committing to that kind of um, activity. Yeah. You know? so once we hit 30 hours, that will trigger certain benefits for the employee as well, won't it? It will. Yes. Will. Yes. Yep. But I mean, to be upfront, we have this is we this is a change in our operation, and we have to pay yeah. for this. Um, yeah. We just got to make sure we're taking that into consideration of the expense. It's not just the hourly rate, right? Right. But add twenty to thirty percent. Yeah. 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 Casey, make sure we're that will be part of what Casey and Brenda are trying to figure out, and that will be reflected in our fee schedule. Okay, Casey. And so to build on Carolyn's comments, um, this is an unanticipated change that we really, well, sort of. it, it, well from an economic development perspective, we it, it, it comes through that vein, but right. particularly knowing how things will move forward, we're not exactly sure. We just know there's gonna be an uptick in activity. Right. Yeah. And so that piece is unanticipated because frankly, at the time we were developing the budget, not all this information was available. Right. 
we had we had no, no no plan nothing. to move yeah. forward. So for okay. purposes of representing this to the finance committee, that's a piece that I think I would like to be to cl to make yeah. clear. Right. Um, and this will come. You know, I'll put this I'll put this forward. But I really did want to make people aware of the fact that this is un unanticipated from a budget perspective. And it's the cost of growth in our community. It's also I mean, the cost right. of the and, and to be quite honest, the, the synergy of you know the three breweries, this will not just be a treehouse expense. Right. This will you know be reflected in the activities that they do that will expand at Berkshire Brew and Powder Hill. I would anticipate Yankee Candle is going to pick up on this a little bit. So we're just anticipating weekend hours, uh, you know, instead of just a couple times a year for our regular events, you know, the car shows, whatever, craft fairs. This is much different, you know, anticipation of, of workload. Yep, I agree. Okay. Sounds good. Good. All right, well, we'll wait to hear from you next week. Yep. Okay, so I will develop a transfer with Brenda and, and yep. present it, just give it to you guys yeah. for next week. Typically the, and so this is why I'm asking the board to review it, is typically the department head approves that, mm -hmm. but in this situation, it's really, oh, it, it's a little more structurally heavy mm -hmm. in terms of the health board. Yeah, so right. We haven't had many transfers yet right just you've had none we've had well oh, we finance have. committee yes it's transfer from reserve so yeah. did we ask um, yet? there there have been a couple and we actually have a couple we have to do oh but that's under ten thousand yeah it's a bit small um i think it, the first one was under ten thousand it was about yeah. it maybe we have another one for seventy five hundred i think one was thirty five hundred we have another yeah. one for seventy five hundred okay. we didn't spend any of it last year I think. we didn't spend as much last year yeah. but as things have progressed through the year i see several transfers coming down the pike okay. yeah um, we probably won't need to do as many of them right this second but contracted services is going to get hit a couple times because we had unanticipated expenses yeah, for sure. so oh, i just yeah. want the board to understand that and so there may need to be some discussion with the finance committee and respectfully i think at least one member of the board of health could help explain oh, yeah. the need for for sure. you know the transfer yeah. and the situation I mean, this is all good news. This is yeah. good news. It's, it's growth in our community economic development a lot of people coming to town and spending money and it's good I, and i'm, I'm just getting old it. i'm getting old i'm working <laughs> for free anyway so yeah. Richard, I we want Nick and i are aging out <laughs> Wait till you oh, get to my age. Can I read one thing? Uh, my birthday was yesterday. I wanted oh, to read. Happy birthday! Oh yes, happy birthday! I saw that nice picture that your sister put up. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah my oh. sister put pictures of me in diapers. Yeah. You and oh your my twin. gosh! I can't believe that. <laughs> Great. Yeah, um, I just wanted to read this real quick. I uh, got this from um, Sue. Uh, so Deerfield donates a food, uh, toy and food drive sponsored by the Deerfield Rec, Rec Department. Um, this has been another difficult year for many households in Franklin County. Let's join in the holiday spirit to help those in need. Uh, new unwrapped toys for children of all ages will be donated to True Christmas. Food donations will go to the uh, Franklin Area Survival Center. Donations of toys and food may be left off at the, in the Deerfield um, Town Hall entryway. For those uh, who don't want to shop, uh, gift certificate uh, donations to area stores may be put in envelopes addressed to the recreation department and put in the drop box. There's a lock box out there. You can do that. Mm -hmm. um, donations will be accepted from December 1st through December 15th. And for more information, um, you can email the rec department at recdept at town.deerfield.ma.us. So, Please donate if you can. I believe that's already on our website. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. I yeah. Think Sue put it up herself. Oh, that's yeah. great. So we'd love to, yeah. love to see that happen. Oh. Um, can Casey, can I can you transfer me over to this the CCI meeting or do I have to get off and get on another time? I did send you the link, Carolyn, because it's a completely different link. So if you exit this meeting and then go to the next meeting, but I would just suggest that the board um, take a recess to transition to the CCI meeting.
for a few minutes. Okay. Yep. Well, I, I better do it now because I can't get into my email. I told you my email is screwed up. So let me, I have to, I have to try to figure out, I think I know how to do it. I'm going to go to the Zoom, and put in the meeting ID number, and then the, um, you know, the, all the print everything in. So it'll take me a few minutes. So I'm. Website, you know, go to town website. The link is right there. Yeah, but the link doesn't click. It doesn't click for you. Yeah. You can hit control, hit your control button and click at the same time. Try that. All right. Well, I still think I need a few minutes, so I'm going to um, adjourn myself. Okay. All right. I'll recess. I'll recess. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you.